Hey guys, and welcome back to our Java OpenGL tutorial series. First off, I want to apologize for taking so long to get back to uploading uh, videos. Um, as you can tell, I'm, I'm using a different microphone because my first microphone uh, has had problems. Um, that's what took me so long. I had to get another microphone to, to do this with, and I don't like the sound of this one quite as much. Hopefully that won't be a problem. Um, but anyway, let's get right to it. Um, we've got, if you remember from last time, we've got the, uh, sorry about the red color. You don't have the red color. Um, you, you have a, um, black color. Um, I made a modification to this since then to test something. So ignore the red. Pretend it's black. Um, as you can see, we've got this blue rectangle right here. Um, what we're going to do today is, I'm going to go ahead and fix that red color. What we're going to do today is we're going to... I'm going to show you um, how to set up a projection matrix. Basically what that is, uh, sorry about the background noise, I'm recording this outside because uh, it's a very nice day. Um, I'm recording it on my laptop. Um, what we've got here is we've got this rectangle and we create the rectangle by using coordinates of negative 0.5 uh, negative 0.5, positive 0.5, negative 0.5, positive point. You, as you can see, they're all negative or positive 0.5. This should give us a square, right? A, a one pick, uh, one unit by one unit square. But that's not what we get. What we get is a rectangle. The reason why we get a rectangle is because of the rectangular shape of our window. Right now, since we haven't set anything in the projection matrix, um, it just maps it to. Uh, this is negative 1 on the x-axis, this is positive 1 on the x-axis. This is negative 1, I think, on the um, y-axis, this is positive 1 on the y-axis. So as you can see, that means that if we go halfway, we reach this, halfway between 0 and negative 1, and then halfway between 0 here and negative 1 down here, is a shorter distance than it is here, therefore it comes out a rectangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and map some units. Basically, we're going to tell it what we want our units to to look like uh, in the um, or how we want the units to be mapped to our window. And the way we do that is in our reshape method, which is called every time the window is reshaped, and that includes when the window is created the first time. Um, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say. Uh, first, we've got to get our GL object, GL2, GL equals drawable.getGL.getGL2. Self-explanatory, you remember this from before. Now, what we want to do is we need to use something called, or go, something goes like this, GL.GL matrix mode, the parameter, GL2 dot GL projection. What this is, is we're setting up which matrix we're going to be dealing with here. If we were doing the, uh, something like this, we'd be using the model view matrix, because this is in models and stuff. Um, as it is, we want to set up something in our projection of uh, how we project the world onto the screen. So we need to set up, say we're using this matrix mode. Uh, this is what it tells us, it says to hey, it says OpenGL, hey, we need to deal with projections right now. And so, uh, after we do that, we're going to say gl dot gl load identity. That basically sets everything to you know neutral, or sets everything to zero, so that we're um, we're everything we run uh, after this is sort of relative to nothing. It's not going to be affected by what's already in this matrix. To put it simply, uh, so what we're going to do, there are two types of projections we can use here. We can use a perspective or we can use an orthographic uh, projection. If we were using sort of a perspective-based thing, that would mean it looks three-dimensional, like ob objects diminish as they get further away from uh, the viewpoint. But that's not what we need because we're doing two-dimensional graphics. And so since we're doing two-dimensional graphics, we need to do something called an orthographic pro uh, projection. An orthographic basically means um, nothing diminishes with distance. So everything's you know exactly flat and two-dimensional, no matter how far away it is from the camera. That's what we want for our two-dimensional graphics. 
So we're going to use this function, gl dot gl ortho. Now, the parameters it takes. Basically, the way this is going to work is we're going to tell it um, what we want the left-hand side of the screen to be called. Okay? If we tell it that we want the left-hand side, or, or rather, we're telling it what unit, what, um, like how many x units, what number, um, sort of if you imagine it like a ruler, uh, you know, that starts at zero, or actually could even start below zero. Basically, imagine you're, you have a ruler, and it's got, you know, inches marked on it, and you want to say the left-hand side of the screen is inch number one. We'll call it one. Uh, and then the right-hand side of the screen is inch number three, or something like that. That tells it that our window, no matter how wide our window is in pixels, that number of pixels there is represented, or that represents uh, two units, because we got one, two, three. Uh, I, I hope, hope the, hopefully this makes sense as we do it. Um, basically, if we were to say, for example, uh, that uh, we want this, let's see, the left-hand side of our screen is 0, the right-hand side of the screen is 3, and then the next thing we do the same thing except for the y-axis, we're saying the bottom of the screen is 0, the top of the screen is 3, and then this last two, don't worry about these last two, just set them to negative 1 and 1. We're going to leave those alone. But as you can see, we've told it uh, the left-hand side is called 0, the right-hand side is called 3. Therefore, um, this is 0, you know, 1, 2, 3 uh, is, is kind of how we're saying it. And then, basically, um, let, I'll, I'll finish this up real quick, and I will demonstrate what happens when we change these values. I think that'll be the best way to explain this. Um, so after gl.glortho, let me check my code base. Yep, we go back to a different matrix mode, the model view matrix. gl.gl matrix mode gl2.gl model view. Just model view. Now, when we run this, you're going to notice a couple of things. First off, our shape is in the lower left hand corner. It's in the lower left hand corner because we told it that zero, the left hand side of the screen is zero. So if we have this here that's negative 0 0.5, that's off the screen. And then positive 0.5 is, you know, over here because zero is here, positive 0.5 is now here. Um, if we change this so that um, the left hand side of the screen is negative 3 and the, pos and the right hand side of the screen is positive 3, that puts 0 smack dab in the middle. And we do the same thing with the y-axis. So we've got negative 3, 3, negative 3, 3. We can, we're saying the screen is 6 units wide, 6 units tall, and it is, uh, and 0 is directly in the center. Observe. This puts a rectangle in the center of the screen. See? And so if I told it that the width of the screen or let's say um, it starts at negative, hang on, okay, we, when we set our window size, we set it to 640 by 360. Let's change it, or not change this, but let's, let's set this up so that we have uh, every unit in OpenGL space represented by one pixel on the screen, okay? And the way we do that is if we want zero in the center, we'd have to say negative, uh, what's half of 640, uh, negative 320 and then positive 320, and then the same thing, negative 180 and positive 180, because this makes, you know, 320, negative 320 to 320 is 640, uh, which is the width of our screen, and then negative 180 to 180 is 360, which is the height of our screen. Um, and then the negative, and then, you know, putting negative 320 over here, positive 320 over here puts zero exactly in the center. And the same thing with the negative 180 and 180 on the y-axis. If we do this, everything disappears. Actually, there is an extremely tiny one pixel wide polygon in the center of the screen. And the reason why it's so small is because we told it to use one unit, you know, negative 0.5 to 0.5. That's one unit, 
and we told it to map units to pixels basically by saying that we have exactly as many units uh, in the screen as we have pixels on the window. So if we want to do something like make a uh, 100 by 100 square, uh, 100 pixel by 100 pixel square, we need to use 100 by 100 units. So negative 50, all of these are going to, you know, they're going to stay negative or positive however they were before, but we're going to change them to 50 instead of 0.5. So 50 for all of these will give us a 100 by 100 square in the center of the screen. See? Basically that's how, how this works, is you tell it what you want the left-hand side of the screen to be, what you want the right-hand side of the screen to be, and uh, what you want the top and the bottom of the screen to be, and it figures out um, how the units then relate to um, the pixels in the window. Because, for example, if I switch these around and I said this was positive and this was negative, you'd have the left and right flipped. You know, negative numbers would put you more towards the right, and positive numbers would put you more towards the left. If I wanted to illustrate that real quick, I could say, let's shift everything over by 100 pixels, so that 320 now becomes 220, and then those 100 pixels get moved over to here, so this becomes 420. Our square should now be slightly to the side, slightly to the left-hand side. See? Because we told it to change uh, the, um, you know, change it so that the left is now negative 220, not negative 320. So now it's not directly in the center anymore. And if I swapped these, made this one uh, positive and this one negative, it should be slightly to the right now because we reversed. We sort of like we flipped the ruler. Over. Oh wait. Oh no, that's not that's not true. And the reason why that's not true is because um, we left the positive and negative numbers here the same. Uh, they're still you know still negative where they were negative and positive where they were positive. That's the reason why uh, that hasn't switched. Um, but I think I'm getting a little ahead of. Uh, ahead of myself. We need to stick with something simple here. I hope I haven't made it too confusing, but basically this is how you map, you know, in this function we have now mapped uh, coordinates and units in OpenGL space onto the screen, uh, and it figures out how to map those to the pixels. So I hope I haven't made this too confusing. If I, you know, if I screwed up anywhere and made things confusing uh, unnecessarily and unnecessarily complicated, um, and you need uh, more explanation, please leave a comment. I will try to my best to answer it. Um, I want to thank you very much for watching, and I'd like to mention that I'm going to try to upload more regularly. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to try to upload a video every Tuesday uh, and every f Thursday. Every Tuesday and Thursday, I will try to upload a video. Um, I'll see if I can stick to that schedule. Um, Again, I apologize for the you know large gap in between videos. But uh, again, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time.